Jordan, just the good and bad from Saturday? What'd you like? What didn't you like? Well, I mean, we obviously didn't start well. Uh, weren't ready to go. You know, that's 100% on me. Um, knew we were going to get um, some formations and some plays that were probably new that we haven't seen. Um, the issue was, you know, the tempo of it, once that gets going downhill, um, you have to adjust on the run. And when things are moving that fast, you know, with a couple of guys that, that are still pretty new, some of them in the secondary, then that, you know, you have to get things slowed down, which actually we did on the first drive. But before I was happy that we, we made them kick a field goal. Uh, I, I knew I knew we were, we were going to be adjusting as we go. I didn't know they were going to go that fast, but, I mean, it is what it is. Um, you know, and then it's, after that, it was uh, what really got us was the, the blown coverages. You know, that was the negative, the communication issues, and that tempo getting going downhill so fast was missed tackles. That was the biggest disappointment for me, and we, and we worked out a lot. And um, so some guys did some things I haven't seen in fall camp. Don't know where it come from, but it, but it is what it is, and it was there. Um, so you know, the positive is we we got it stopped, we got adjusted, we calmed down. Um, second and third quarter, um, thought we played, thought we played pretty good. Had some some new guys that step into some roles and played really well. So that was good to see. And we got to continue to improve on that. So this week, um, personal change, personnel changes in terms of what you saw on film, or just no. played better with what you got. Played better with what we got. You know, the guys, you know, I told them the same thing after the game. Is that I don't feel any different about that group of guys. I really, I've been excited about this group, still excited about this group. Um, I think it was a, um, you know, it's got to be a learning experience. Got to be a humbling experience. You know, we're not we're not the group from last year. And uh, to think that we are is, you know, guys, we, we're, we're wrong. We're not. We have, we have to be who we are. And um, But we'll, those guys that you saw early on uh, with those mistakes, they'll be better. We'll be better as a whole. How would you feel about the way some of your young defense were on that play? I was really happy. Um, you know, it was really good to see Jordan Jefferson running around um, and, and just just playing the fundamentals um, of, of playing defensive line for him and playing fast. That was the biggest thing, playing fast. And then Sean Martin. You know, Sean Martin's the guy that showed up. Um, that, that was good to see. I was happy with that. You mentioned Mesidor. What did he do specifically that was so impressive on Saturday? Well, I mean, the first play of the game. <clears throat> you know, if he don't make the tackle on a bubble screen to the field away from him and he's the nose guard, it probably scores. Um, and you don't have to look any further than that play. You know, show me another nose guard that's going to make that play. So the effort plays were there all game? They were there all game. They were there all game. Um, and we've, we've got to get, you know, 10, 12, 13, you know, 20, 21 other guys playing the way that guy does. You flip Dante and Akeem sometimes, nose and D tackle. Did, is that something you, you're just going to do and rotate it, or are you just still looking to see which works better where? Uh, a little bit of both. You know, the techniques are very similar. <clears throat> um, the issues that it creates um, for an offense will be depending on week to week, how we want to use them. Uh, in the in the packages that we want to use them in certain ways, um, it's you know I said this you know last year when we started moving Darius around it's you know it's pretty much the same position um, we 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 slide those guys back and forth um, depending on a lot of things so it's it's a uh, it's a uh, it looks like a position change on paper but it's it's really the same position. Communication issues you know, that cause some big, a lot of big plays to get out. Is it more communication between sidelines of players or in play diagnosing things? Where were the where were the majority of those? There, there was one of each um, on, on two the two big plays you're talking about. One was player to player. Um, the other one was a, was a signal issue um, that was that was a. There's a transition there between special teams, which are mo a lot of defense players, and defense. And there was a there was a communication issue on on, on the signal, and and that led to uh, end up leading to three points. I, I was just happy at that point that we that we forced a three points uh, right there before halftime. But um, those are things we'll get fixed. Is that something that 
is going to happen in every game, though, and sometimes you just don't get burned by him because play went the other way or something like that? Uh, yeah, I mean, obviously you don't want him to. I think it's something that's going to happen on the road more than, than it happens, um, you know, at home. And I think that's, you know, that's one of the things that, that, that obviously there's – it's no excuse for, but I mean, it, it, it's you know, there's things you gotta, you have to over communicate on defense, <clears throat> and when people attack, the, attack you the way that people attack us, and, and just offense in general now, where you're getting, you know, the same plays in a lot of different formations, same looks, you know, same sets of plays with with RPOs, you, you have to over communicate, and we've harped that with our guys from the jump, and we've done a really pretty good job of it through fall camp and there was just a lot of things that showed up that hadn't showed up and and uh but they did and and we got to fix them Todd is a guy that's been in the program it seems like forever but you know this was only his fourth game so what what has how well first how did he play in your opinion and how has this journey been finally getting him back on the field so who, who was it say it again Taj Elson. oh um you know the one thing about Taj is is you know if I if I pick a guy behind Mesador with his effort it was Taj Austin. I mean, Taj plays hard. Um, you know there's, there's there's things that you know, me being an old junior college coach that you know his transition has really never had the chance to start. You know, this is his first off season, so if you watch him play, there's still a lot of things that he fundamentally playing playing a five technique at this level that he still has to work on. But what he makes up for is how hard he plays, and and, and to a point of reckless sometimes, which is fine at that position. And uh, he, uh, but you know, that's a guy that you'll see as the season goes on. Is it wants it, you know, like you said, he's only played four games, and um, the speed of that starts to slow down as he starts to stack games. Um, he'll be he'll be a lot better. He'll con he'll be a guy that continues to take steps as the season goes on. First game for your young corner. Is that a building block for him now? This is something to say, hey, this is what you got to work on. This is what you, you know, you got two great guys at Maryland and, you know, build off that? I mean, I don't think you have to tell him. I think he, I think you can see it. And, and that's, that's a, a natural learning progression, especially that position. You know, I always said, you know, I think any coach says it's not just myself or, or Shadon or anybody like you have to have a short memory. And and DP does too. DP just he got to learn from it because those are not going to be the last good receivers he plays in his college career. So um, you know, one was a fundamental issue. One was a one was a um, one of those communication issues. And you know, to to think that any of these these guys, and I said this, I believe in the first press conference, that any of these guys that are <clears throat> COVID freshmen, second year guys. That, that's not a normal progression as a young player. They're still really young players. And they're going to make mistakes like that. You know, what I, I have to do one or two, we have to get them better. And if they, and if it's something that they have to, to learn and they continue to learn, I can't put them in that position. So that's, you know, that's on me. And so, but D Darryl's going to be fine. And he will, he's going to be a guy that's going to come in, he's going to learn from that, and he's going to be better. And that's a, that's a, you know, I mean, you know, it's just like anything else, it's like, you know, I've put Sean Martin out there against a, a second-round draft pick offensive tackle. Well, he's going to be better in the long run because of that. And, and Darrell will, too. Can you um, help them by maybe disrupting the quarterback a little bit more? I guess that's got to be part of the formula, right? Yeah, we, we've got to. You know, it's one thing that I'm, I'm the, the outside of the tackling, um, which was more angles than actual tackling, um, that we didn't affect the quarterback more. Um, and we, well, I think we kind of overthought some things. I think we kind of played – a little slow, trying to trying to do too much instead of just rushing the passer, um, and so that's that's disappointing. That was one of the things I, I was I was kind of disappointed in was was that. But and yes, we have to, and um, you know, and then and then you know the the the, the first touchdown, um, you know that's a that's a. Eight